Was Viserys Targaryen, first of his name, a good king? This is a question I've seen hotly debated in the House of the Dragon slash A Song of Ice and Fire community for the past few weeks, or even really since the show started in August. And today I wanted to dive into it in the aftermath of Viserys' death in episode 8 and examine his reign as a whole. I think I have a pretty decent idea of what I think for this question, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. So if you feel particularly strongly in one direction or another, or just think he's a pretty neutral king overall, be sure to let me know what you think in addition to leaving a like and subscribing, all that typical stuff. I really appreciate seeing any support on this video, and I'd love to discuss similar things in the future. So without further ado, and in the aftermath of his death, let us discuss the good and the bad of King Viserys Targaryen. At least from the initial perceptions of things, and from what we knew from Fire and Blood going into things, I think that the main perception of Viserys prior to the show was as a bad king, and understandably so. The events of his rule lead into a very direct uh, cause of conflict in the near future of A Song of Ice and Fire, and overall I think that that really has tainted his rule as a whole, regardless of the peace that was overwhelmingly present throughout it. However, I do think that overall House of the Dragon has given us a better perspective on the reign as a whole. Viserys has had many blunders throughout his reign, some of which are pointed out in the very first episode. In the big confrontation scene in the throne room, Daemon says to his brother that Viserys is controlled by those around him, the leeches in his council that will essentially contort him whichever way they please in order to gain some advantage for their house or their station. Overall, I agree with Damon in this capacity. However, I don't think that Viserys is an entirely inept ruler. Frankly, considering all of the people we've seen as rulers in the A Song of Ice and Fire universe between Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, I think Viserys is probably in the top two kings we have seen as king on screen. He's probably tied with Bobby B, Robert Baratheon. And I think the two of them share a lot of similarities, in addition to dying in their first season. Uh, I think that they're both very much ruled by the people around them. In Robert's case, due to kind of lack of interest in the position, and in Viserys's case, due to the kind of ineptitude general to him and just wanting to please everyone. I think there are a lot of interesting comparisons to be made between both of these characters. And I think that the main thing that makes Robert better and has his era as more peaceful and more well-remembered is the fact that John Aaron was his hand for so long. John Aaron was a smart, politically savvy guy who was able to run the realm in Robert's stead while Robert was doing whatever he wanted. Viserys, on the other hand, had two different hands. He had Otto Hightower, who was blatantly self-interested in attempting to advance the station of his own house at any given turn, at the cost of all other elements of his rule. And he had Lionel Strong, who was a very genuinely good uh, hand, who really attempted to help him in all capacities. One of my main takeaways of the first few episodes was, wow, this Lionel Strong guy really seems to be good at everything and doing a great job as hand and as master of laws. However, the main bad part of Viserys is the fact that Lionel Strong does not stick around forever. I'd say the biggest flaw in his rule is bringing Otto back as hand after he's dismissed and after Lionel dies. I get that Allison pushed for this and Viserys was in a weakened state, which we'll get to, uh, but I do think that that was a big blunder that would have far really circumvented any of the problems that are coming up had he just not had Otto return as his hand. I think that Viserys has two main weaknesses as a ruler, his idealism and his focus. I'll tackle the first one first. His idealism, I think, is something that is very innate to the character. I think he wants the best for everyone, and he wants everyone to be acting on the best intentions possible. We see throughout the show that he is very kind of forgiving throughout and generally wants to assume the best of people, which is a great trait for a person. I do think that in a lot of regards, Viserys seems like a pretty great guy. However, that trait is a not a good one in a king. People are often trying to take advantage of rulers, and he does not really see that. It takes him forever to find out that Otto is actively attempting to put Aegon on the throne, despite Otto essentially acting as though that was the case since episode 3. It takes Rhaenyra threatening to essentially not marry Laenor and go off and do her own thing in order to, for Viserys to take any action whatsoever on that. In addition to this, I think his focus is another great flaw of Viserys' character. What exactly do I mean by his focus? I mean his focus on the prophecy, on the Song of Ice and Fire, which, I mean, I'm focused on the Song of Ice and Fire too. I'm sure if you're watching this, I am as well. 
But that is not the key to his rule. He doesn't know that it's 170 years in the future that this prophecy is going to come true or not come true. But he's so hyper-focused on it that he is willing to let anything happen. He is trying to keep as much peace in the short term just in case it is going to come true tomorrow. He needs to have peace right now in order to maintain the status quo and keep a Targaryen on the throne in case the Great Winter comes. And this short-sightedness leads him to making a lot of negative decisions in the interest of peace in the short term. This is something that's added new to the show. We don't know about the prophecy in the book, and I don't think that that was really intended to be an element of Viserys' character specifically in the book. But I think it's a fantastic change, and I think it marks a great adaptation, and Ryan Condal really doing a fantastic job with it overall. I also think that Viserys tended to kind of play the middle lane a bit too much. He was kind of too beholden to those around him. I think one of the best things we see in his final episode is him finally asserting himself as a king when Vaymond makes his claim about Driftmark. Uh, however, that was very much a bit too little too late in that he's kind of beholden to everyone around him for quite a while, and because of this, everyone feels entitled to things like marriage alliances and his uh, general advice and being able to advise him. I think that has greatly kind of hampered his abilities in the long run and could be a very high contributing factor to the reason why he's not as great of a king as some of his predecessors. I think that this is something that Robert Baratheon definitely has over Viserys, in that he does not really seem beholden to ever anyone or really interested in much anything to do with the kingship, other than tourneys that he can organize. But yeah, I think that out of the kings we've seen on screen, I'd probably rank it Robert Baratheon, followed by uh, Viserys, followed by either Cersei or Tommen, depending on how I'm feeling that day, followed by Joffrey. I hadn't realized how few kings we'd seen on screen, but yeah, it's really not that many, and I, I'm excited to see a few more in the near future, as it seems this show is going to be doing. I also thought there's another really interesting parallel between Robert Baratheon and Viserys. Both of their final acts are attempting to bridge an insurmountable conflict with a final act of peace. With Robert Baratheon, he signs this paper saying that Ned is going to be protector of the realm until his son comes of age. With Viserys, he names Luke the heir to Driftmark and has this great dinner with all of his family, and it's a very happy occasion until he leaves. In both of these cases, you get a moment where it seems as though everything is going to be peaceful and work out. However, we never quite get there. We get kind of thwarted in both cases, in Robert's case by the Lannisters, and in this case by Alicent's misinterpreting of the prophecy. None of this is to say that Viserys is without his good moments as king. I think he's got a few great moments, particularly in episode 5, I think it was. I really liked his diplomacy with the Valerians. I loved that he came to the compromise that, yeah, their sons can be Valerians until they sit the Iron Throne, at which time they are Targaryens. That is something that I actively wondered when I was reading Fire and Blood, and the fact that they thought of it and addressed it, and Viserys had the forethought to consider exactly what that would entail, really shows the mark of somebody who is thinking ahead in very specific circumstances. Additionally, the entirety of Episode 8, I think he's performing very admirably as a ruler, especially given his diminished capacity as a ruler, given his various uh, ailments that seem to be affecting both his mind and his very much his body. But I think he very much uh, owns the throne for once, as he has not really done in the past, and it was really nice to see that. Furthermore, it's important to consider Viserys as someone who is pretty much being actively sabotaged. We have pretty decent evidence that the maesters are poisoning him to some regards, and Otto is kind of Grima worm-tonguing this whole thing. So to a degree, some of the faults that have uh, erupted in the aftermath of Viserys' rule are not necessarily his fault. In addition to that, the fact that succession was going to be an issue is not something that just came about in Viserys' rule. I'd say the roots of this upcoming conflict go as far back as the Great Council of 101, that first scene of this entire series. That being Jaehaerys picking Viserys as his heir over Rhaenys. I think that that precedent is just a recipe for disaster in terms of the general rule of Westeros. No matter which way it's made, I think it's just difficult to have a situation like that. And I think that was really the main thing that cemented the war as entirely happening rather than just Viserys' rule. So was Viserys a good king? I wouldn't go that far. I've seen a fair few King of Westeros tier lists that have been made prior to this series airing. And I don't think that Viserys deserves the F or D tier that he often receives. 
More accurately, I believe Viserys deserves a C or maybe even a B tier based on the show's portrayal. He was not a good king by any means, but I do think that he is actively being hampered by both everyone around him and his own sense of morality. And I think given both of those things, I think he does an excellent job with what he had to work with. I don't think that his uh, conflict was necessarily able to be prevented, or at least it would have been very difficult to do so. And I think that he does get a bit too much flack generally overall. But I do think that some of that flack is deserved, particularly in the decision-making and trying to appease everyone department. But yeah, I'd say solid middle-of-the-pack king overall. What did you think of Viserys' time on the Iron Throne? Do you think he was a good king, a bad king, somewhere in between? Do you agree with my assessment, or is there anything that I've missed or not brought up in my time discussing it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'd also love to ha see you subscribe and like the video. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I love growing this channel, and I really enjoy making videos about House of the Dragon, and among very many other things. And I'd really appreciate any help with that whatsoever. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I'm really looking forward to this new episode coming out on Sunday, as it looks like it's just going to be all of the greens, all of the time, and that sounds like a fantastic train wreck to watch. I hope you all watch it. I'll have a video out on it as soon as it's done. He's fabulous. He's serving Targaryen real.